Male Champ of the Year. All right, for Male Champ of the Year, this is a really tricky one because again, and it's a theme of the show, the UFC really dominated, but we do have one fighter in these categories, and it's pretty apparent, especially by the picture, because it was very tough to find one. Phil DeFries had himself a year. And if you you can't tell the story of Phil DeFries without focusing on his UFC career, he battled mental demons. He had a hard time making it to the cage. He, of course, lost to Stipe Miocic. He went to Bellator. He had a fight with M1 Global, bounced around a little bit. This guy has absolutely found his footing with KSW. And you can look at his last fight at KSW 57 and go, well, he fought an old Michael Kita. Okay, so be it. But this guy continues to finish decent talent, continues to put on really good performances. He's been a great KSW heavyweight champ. I think he's deserving of being in this category for sure. But the other fighters, Stipe Miocic getting the win over Daniel Cormier. How could you not have him here? Huge trilogy fight. And maybe you didn't love the fight, but Miocic definitely deserving. We have Jan Blahovic, And if you want to talk about, again, a late career resurgence, if you will, Jan Blahovic at the start of his UFC career was a 500 fighter, if that. And he really struggled to get wins in high pressure situations. His 2020 was absolutely amazing. The win over Beast in 25-8 was a huge one. The win over Dominic Reyes and just shooting his shots to the body. Absolutely amazing. We have Devison Figueredo. I mean, what can I say? The fights against Benavidez, missing weight or not, amazing. The fight against Alex Perez, the fight against Brandon Moreno, great stuff from our flyweight champ, Matt. Flyweights never die, as we always say. And Israel Adesanya, I mean, yes, you might have thought that the fight against Yuel Romero was a bit of a dud, but the fight against Paulo Costa was something that you pay for a masterclass on YouTube. John Franklin, we have a lot of different fighters out here. And again, maybe no Bellator prelim champs. But if you look at this list, what really stands out to you? You know, I, the, the freeze thing is, you know, I mean, that's that's a conversation I'm not prepared to have ever. Uh, Jan Blahovic is a... Okay, so a couple of guys, like we said here, they, they find themselves in a situation where a little bit's getting taken away from them just circumstantially, right? Adesanya, obviously the pandemic affected him because he's a huge draw. Uh, Blahovich, he won a belt not from John Jones. It was vacated. Nothing to do with him. He still got the belt. Steven Miosic, he's, you know, a first responder. So that affects how often he's going to fight. It always has. And uh, so he had the one win, but the win was so huge and so legacy forming that the question becomes you get the nod. And then Figueredo, you can't mention his name without mentioning he missed weight. Imagine if he hadn't missed weight. I mean, this guy in four fights basically cleaned out flyweight, which admittedly was not a deep division because, you know, it was on the chopping block last year or whatever. But, I mean, this guy's got Henry Cejudo thinking about maybe coming out of retirement because of what he's done. So listen, this is a interesting category. It seems like I've kind of tipped my hand on the winner, but – there's a lot of guys here who, who did some work and they made yeah. the best of the opportunities they had. And I mean, Matt, your guy, Brandon Moreno was just a, just a sliver away from beating Devis and Figueredo. We'd have a whole different conversation on our hands here. Again, this is a pretty tricky one. And I would assume that across the board, a lot of different shows, a lot of different personalities are probably going to go with the same fighter. You can make a case for, the other four that are on this list and maybe Phil DeFries, uh, I might be the only one that's including him on some of these lists. But Matt, if you're going to give away this award, who is our male champ of the year? So I know how difficult it is to make sushi by hand and anyone who has the patience to be able to not only do that, but also be a professional hairdresser and also own a water buffalo plus win four basically title fights in one year deserves to be your male champ of the year. That's Devison Figueredo. Missing weight or not, the first fight against Joseph Benavidez was not competitive in the slightest. And how does he one up that? He puts on one of the greatest title fight performances of all time in the rematch, just to really cement that he is the best 125er in the world. And then on short notice, he chokes out Alex Perez in the first round without any issue whatsoever. And to top that all off, he decides to go out and have a fight of the year nominee as his final fight to cap off his year. Devison Figueredo definitely deserves to be male champ of the year he had a phenomenal year and i do think that he not only upped his profile as a fighter in the pound for pound rankings Devison Figueredo has a lot more eyes on him now than he did the start of the year and i think that has a lot to do with sort of people getting to know him outside the cage along with just how entertaining he is inside the cage 
All right, there you have it. Our male champ of the year, Mr. Devison Figueredo out of Brazil. I mean, who could be more deserving than Figueredo? You'd be hard pressed to find a uh, candidate really. So let's transition over. And I mean, for Figueredo, things could have been totally different if he didn't decide to kick for Brandon Moreno in the nuts as hard as he could. That won't happen in our next category. Let's check out the female champ of the year. 